Hi, this is Santosh Singh. I am petroleum economist and I do financial and fiscal regime modeling for oil and gas companies. In this video, I am going to talk about the nature of an ideal fiscal regime and different components of an ideal fiscal regime and how to design them. In fact, this is one of the most common questions that I often get asked by different people. So, what is an ideal fiscal regime? And my answer is, in fact, there is no straight answer to an ideal fiscal regime. If you analyze different fiscal regimes of different countries, you'd find that there are as many fiscal regimes as there are countries on the globe. And there is no one single regime which you can pinpoint and say, okay, this is the this is an ideal fiscal regime because what happens in most cases is that either the regime is too regressive or too progressive and an ideal fiscal regime should have a very fine balance between being too regressive or being too progressive and, uh, th there are certain points which should be included in an ideal fiscal regime and they are like an ideal fiscal regime should be such that it ensure a fair and equitable share of the revenue between the government and the contractor and the regime is such that it is based on different level of profitability that is it can capture the effect of different scenarios like different scenarios of price different scenarios of production and should be able to capture the impact of all those different scenarios on the project profitability and then decide the level of government take or contractor take based on on different uh, profitability of the project it should not be too regressive or too progressive that is uh, the government should have a higher take in the project only when the project generates a higher profitability if the project is a marginal project uh, that is if it's economically marginal then the government should leave most of the cash in the hand of the contractor and this scenario is most suitable for a smaller or a marginal player. For uh, a big multinational or a super major, this doesn't uh, make situation worse for him. But for a smaller player, it definitely makes the situation worse for him if the if the regime is a regressive uh, regime. So I would say uh, ideal fiscal regime should be progressive because that helps even the smaller player player to invest in in the in, in the country and also invest in the marginal fields. Secondly, an ideal fiscal regime should be such that it it does not allow too much speculation in the market, and it is it is uh, helping uh, hel helping the oil and gas industry to prosper and to compete with each other. That it that is it promotes an environment of competition. Also, it should not be too complex because if it's too complex then it, it becomes so much burdensome for the government to administer it and to monitor the, the regime and the companies and their finances so th these are some of the the things which should be incorporated in an ideal fiscal regime now having said that how should you how, how, how should one design an ideal fiscal regime to start with i would say avoid all elements of a red, of regressiveness and to start with, I would say avoid any signature bonus because signature bonus introduced an element of regressiveness, especially for the smaller players, because they have to to to, to invest money even before they know about the project profitability or about the prospectiveness of the field. If at all the government has to uh, to have a bonus, then it should be based on the production. And that is to say, there should be only there should only be a production bonus in a in a fiscal regime of a country, because that makes it so much more more favorable to the contractor, because at least it is based on the reward side of a risk reward equation of an exploration project. Similarly, the government should try to avoid royalty, because again, royalty is it is the major element in a regime which makes it regressive and if you have royalty based regime then nobody likes to, to pay royalty because it, 
because if if the project's uh, profit is less, you end up having lesser share in in the project profit. And the only reason that government wants to have royalty in the project is because they want to ensure that they have a share in the revenue in the very beginning of the project. And if that is the motive, then I would say there are there are other means and methods to have a share in the project without introducing any royalty and one such method is to by introducing cost recovery so instead of royalty just have a cost recovery limit and that will ensure that there, there, there is uh, some revenue left and if, if there is an element of profit sharing then it will definitely ensure that the government gets a share in the project revenue in all the accounting period just by implementing a cost recovery limit and a profit split mechanism. So my suggestion is avoid bonus and royalty and introduce a cost recovery limit and a split in the profit to be shared between the government and the contractor group. So in just simple words I would say have a PSC without any royalty or bonus. Now the next question is okay we have a PSC but how do we decide the, the, the level of cost recovery limit or the profit split what should be the mechanism my suggestion have a limit on the cost recovery or uh, a different rate of profit split based on a sliding scale and those sliding scales should be based on uh, some measure of profitability like it should be based on sliding scale which get triggered based on different R factor or different IRR or different ROR. The benefit of having a sliding scale based on R factor or IRR or ROR is that they can very effectively capture the effect of different price scenarios, different production scenarios, different cost environment. Because what we are trying to measure by R factor or IRR or ROR is to, to find the profitability and the profitability is directly dependent not only on production but also on price and cost environment. So that is the best method that uh, I would suggest to anybody, to the contractor, to an oil company or to the government while they are designing the fiscal regimes. What happens generally is that government introduces sliding scale but those sliding scale are based on just one linear dimension that is uh, production level by introducing uh, production based sliding uh, scales you make the system less regressive that's fine but you are looking only at one dimension that is either only on the production or the price if you introduce r factor or irr you effectively are capturing all the different scenarios of profitability based on different price production cost and other other things which can impact the profitability of the project. So that is my ideal fiscal regime, a PSC or a PSA without bonus, without royalty, but with a limit on the cost recovery and, uh, and profit to be shared between government and contractor group based on R factor or IRR. Uh, there's one more element which need to be answered and that is what about the taxes? Uh, I would say let there be no tax or if at all there is a tax then let it be deemed tax or imputed tax. The benefit of that is that it, it removes the impact of fluctuation in the tax regime of a country. What happens in most of the cases is that every 5 or 10 years there is a change in the tax regime of the country. They will either increase or decrease the, the tax rate and tax labs etc. If the tax is deemed or imputed, then that tax is paid by the NOC on behalf of the contractor group. And that means the contractor group or the oil company does not have to bother about the tax implication. The only, only, only time he has to bother about the tax is while booking the reserve and while paying taxes in his home country. So for that purpose, I would say let them book the tax barrel and and let them treat that uh, the deem tax as if they have actually paid the tax so that they do not pay any tax in their home country to just to avoid the double taxation 
Uh, one more thing that comes to my mind right now is the government participation, because that is also uh, also a part of a fiscal regime. Most cases there are there are like limit on the government participation. Like what government says that th they will have a stake of say 10% to 20% or maybe 25% if the field becomes commercially viable. I, uh, according to me, 25% uh, or 30% participation is a little bit on the higher side. But if it's on say on the lower side, like 5% to 10%, uh, I think that does not impact the economics too badly and should be accept should be acceptable to the contractor group. And so, government should be allowed to participate, maybe 5 to 10%, and that will make a regime suitable both for the government and the contractor group and that would be ideal for everybody for the investors for the company for the government and for the people of the country that is all that i want to discuss about an ideal fiscal regime i hope you liked it and i would like to get your feedback and any comment on whatever i have discussed and thank you once again for watching my video thank you and bye bye